Hi there, this is Leah from Mommyish, and today I'm going to give a tutorial on how to create realistic um, watercolor effects. And this is not using my action, but rather by using tools that you might already have at your disposal. I'm going to be using this watercolor stain from Sugar Plum and then some, um, some of my misted transparencies as well for this tutorial. Um, you might already have watercolor texture overlays like this or misted brushes and whatnot on your own. So feel free to use those. Um, but we're gonna do this together um, step by step. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and open up what you're going to be using. All right, um, and that's, that's for our start. Then um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new document. I'm gonna have this one be, mm, let's do four by four inches. Um, now I want you to go to your shapes. Um, it could be a circle. It could be anything. Actually, I think a circle would be easier because that's a shape we all have, right? Um, and just create a circle to play with. And this is really a tutorial to kind of help you get comfortable with the process. And then you can apply it to alphas, to several elements at once, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to create a new layer for the background. This is really, you don't have to do this. This is more so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to not merge visible because that would be stupid, but I'm going to lock that layer so if I touch it, it doesn't matter. All right, here we go. So we want this to be a cool watercolor circle. <laughs> All right, so um, let's pretend it's going to be a sticker. This is going to be a sticker. How can we make this look really traditionally watercolor and awesome? All right, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to this watercolor um, transparency overlay. Well, it's not transparent. It's, um, it's an overlay. What you're going to do is you're going to play with your adjustments. Um, remember that whenever you're creating a brush, darker areas are um, that you're wanting to really see. Uh, the darker they are, the better they show up. Areas you don't want to see, let's say, for example, that, um, the whiter they are, the less it's going to show up. As it is right now, all of it would show up uh, to some point or another. So I'm going to play with the levels. I want the darker areas to really show up. And the areas that are a little light, I want to increase that um, so they don't show up quite as much. Then you can play with your mid-tones. If you wanted it to be a really strong brush or not so strong brush, I kind of like the way this looks. All right. Um, you don't have to merge your layers together to create the brush, but um, you won't be able to create a brush if the level one is selected. So if you just go to your background and go to edit, uh, define brush preset, and we're going to call this watercolor uh, one, just like that, it's done. So be ye not afraid. Uh, and then you can just delete that and we're done. We're done using this. So we can go ahead and close it and we're not saving any changes. We've created our brush. We're happy. All right. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer over the circle. I'm going to clip this layer to the circle. Um, I'm going to rename this base so you know what I'm talking about. So we have our base layer, which is the shape. This is going to be watercolor one. All right. So I created a huge brush. That was a 12 by 12. Um, some versions of Photoshop, I think, will only go up to 2400 pixels, which is an 8 by 8 at 300 uh, PPI. So um, keep that in mind. This is a 12 by 12. And I'm going to scale it down because I don't need it to be that big. This is a four by four area. Um, and let's see, four by four is what, 1200 pixels? Like that. So that would be like right at the size of this, um, this document. Uh, to start off, I'm gonna use black. This is so we can really see where the effects are at and if we want them to be like that. All right, um, I kind of like it. I think I want that darker area to be more upon the edge. So I'm going, wait, maybe not. If I increase the size of it a little bit, I can. There we go, like that. All right, so there we go. Um, this is just stamped on there. Uh, let's say I wanted to even add a little more effect. I can create a new layer. This is gonna be watercolor two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate my brush um, using the brush uh, presets themselves. And we're just going to kind of twist it around just a little bit like that. So there, now we have two or, or we could really, uh, we could increase it like to 2400, which was like eight by eight. 
and just get a totally different little feel right there like that um yeah okay but um i'm gonna put two underneath one so i'm gonna just drag it down all right so now the fun part or i think is fun is i like to create gradients instead of flat color when playing with watercolors um we're gonna stay in the same color family i'm not gonna go too crazy but um it really is fun just you um double click on your layer let me let me stop and do that again uh double click and your layer style box will pop up go to gradient overlay and then click on this part here now we're going to create our own gradient. If you don't know about great a lot about gradients, um, the most important thing to know is there's opacity stops at the top. When it's totally black, it means it's at 100%. That's what we want. Then there's the color stops. All right, um, and we can add. So I'm just going to add one in the middle, and I'm going to move it to like 50%. So it's right in the middle. Um, and these add like. Um, Kind of like we're like dividing areas of color <laughs> don't worry we'll fix it don't be scared it's like leah what are you doing you just ruined it that's supposed to be down like all over here um so at 50 percent, and there'll be another color stop there at 50 percent. all right um so i'm gonna go with pink because you know me love my pink and in the middle i'm gonna go for a corally sort of pinky color and then for the top I'm gonna go for a more goldeny sort of color if I really like this gradient I can save it um, just name it something like let's say watercolor tutorial <laughs> and it'll save it in my palette so I can use it later uh, you can then play with the rotation on it or the scale of it whatever just have fun don't be afraid all right so that's the one on top and this is the one underneath I'm going to use the same gradient that I just made. Again, I oh, I thought I saved it, but I didn't because I'm a terrible person. Um, but I have some of the same colors saved. So I'm going to delete these two colors. I'm going to move that down here. 50% for this one. And I had no idea there. There we go. There's our pink. It's back. All right. <laughs> that wasn't too hard. I can fix it. Um, and now I'm going to just play with the angle on this one as well. And we're going to go like that. Okay. So now we have these two watercolor um, layers. I'm going to rasterize these layer styles. Now I'm going to change my blending mode of the one on top or the one below, whatever, or both. Um, I like linear burn because it kind of gives you a more accurate feel of what it would do if uh, these brushes were used on top of each other in reality. And I just noticed that because of the paper grain, by not having them go the same way, it looks a little awkward. So I'm going to angle it a little differently so they're angled the right way. And it looks more correct as soon as my computer decides to let me. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, so there. Now that looks a bit better. Now you might be saying this isn't enough. This isn't enough. So let's add a watercolor layer three. We're going to take our brush again <clears throat> excuse me and i think i'm going to have a coughing fit so i might have to pause one moment now that i'm done coughing my brains out i'm back again i'm going to go with um i can see that i need to turn this angle it to be that way because we want it to look right and i'm using black this time because what i'm going to do is put this over the top and then what i'm going to do is maybe change to like a color not a color burn what am i doing I'm like, what am I doing to overlay and see what that does? It adds like depth without making it too crazy. So there we go. Um, now that is my first part. Um, the one thing I forgot to do at the very beginning is to duplicate your base layer. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to duplicate this layer and everything's going to become unclipped, but don't worry. Just, just take your copy, move it underneath for now. Um, Oops, and control alt G them back into place. All right, now I'm gonna take my base layer copy and I'm gonna move it up above everything else. Because it's a shape, I'm going to rasterize this um, layer because we're going to play with it a little bit and I want it to do what I want it to do. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna turn down the fill to zero. You're like, oh, I can't see it anymore. It's supposed to be like that. All right, um, we're gonna call this edging. All right, double click on that layer and bring up your layer style box. 
we're going to go to inner glow because it's just so wonderful and it has this inner beauty and glow change that to black you're then going to go to color burn like that um, now you're gonna mess with the size just kind of get a size that you want you might want to turn down your opacity a little bit whatever um, and we can still play with this for a little bit I'm not going to commit it sometimes I like to add a little bit of noise because I'm crazy uh, change the range maybe more less you know just kind of play around have fun with it don't be afraid and just hit okay do not rasterize the style after you've done that do not because it's just going to turn into this weird black edging that you don't want so leave it as um, right now it's a color burn as we do that I'm going to go to filter now I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happens um, with filter we're going to go to distort then we're going to go to wave what wave does is it's going to change our edges a bit and you know how it is when you watercolor like the edges get a little wonky because that's how it's supposed to be I mean that's the cool thing about watercolor um there's generators there's wavelengths which the best i can describe it is like how far between it goes up and down um this way the amplitude is how far um from high to low and then the scale um i tend to we'll put the scale at like maybe seven and five um, the minimum height will go with like eight the max maybe 20 pixels um, the wavelength, I kind of like it where it is, and we'll keep it at five and uh, sign. All right, and then I'm gonna hit okay. You may not be able to tell much. It did, it did do something. <laughs> I promise. Uh, and if you, and if you're having a hard time kind of seeing what it does, change the size, and increase the opacity, and you can see what it's doing on the edges. Um, another thing that I forgot to do is clip this layer. So Control Alt G to all the ones below it. Now we're going to do a control S because we're remembering the filter we just made and it's going to make it do a little more. You see how it did right there? I think I'm going to do it again. And uh, it's imperfect. It kind of gives it that feeling that we, you know, the edges were being kind of weird and it just, I don't know. I, I really like the way it looks. <laughs> Hopefully you do too. So um, there we go. That's, that's adding a little more effect. Now we're going to take it all again a step further. Um, we have our base layer once again um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna rasterize this layer it doesn't really matter but we're gonna do it um, I want you to select that layer and do a control a you're gonna take your um, your tool like your movement tool move tool yeah um, and just you're not really going to move it uh, what I like to do is like I like to trick my computer into thinking I'm gonna move it and I just do it just a bit just so it will select it and not move it so we have our our base layer selected now what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter um not filter what am i talking about select modify and then contract we're going to contract this by like hmm, 20 pixels that's good all right next i'm going to choose my selection tool and then you're going to choose refine edge and what we're doing here is we're going to create a feather the feathering effect is almost like a blur except it's like a selection blur this is going to allow us to use a brush that i or actually um, i'm going to create out of my transparent piece um, to add a little effect without having it cut off the brush that i'm using um, sharply so it's like oh you can tell that was a brush because it's cut perfect this adds a little feather so it'll kind of like fade which um, it's just it's more for uh, just wanting it to look a little you know more realistic all right here we go um, so I'm just gonna create a layer underneath edging for this I'm gonna go to my misted transparencies I like the way they look I'm gonna go to edit define brush preset I'm not naming it because I'm lazy and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my layer I'm going to um, choose I'm just going to kind of select a little area and I'm going to stamp it with black yes um, and while the selection is still going and what you'll see here is how it kind of fades it out um, now the other thing to keep in mind if you don't if you think it needs to be faded more don't be afraid go to, to your back to your selection tool refine edge increase your feather increase your feather 
increase your feather. It's going to be okay. All right. So we have this layer still. I have my brush still and I'm going to stamp it. And for some reason, it's not wanting to show me what it's doing, but whatever. Oh, I like that. All right. I'm going to change this to an overlay. Uh, it's very, a very subtle effect. I'm going to create another layer again, another overlay, and I'm just going to stamp a different part and adds a little bit more. Now <laughs> I'm going to create um, another layer overlay. I'm going to choose white. I'm not changing the mode. This is to just create some little um, droplets uh, is the best way I can put it. Uh, maybe not that many droplets. What do you think? Just a little. That looks good. All right. So I'm going to deselect now that we have that, that edging done the way we want it. And then I'm going to show you kind of what all this extra effect has done. So we're going to turn off these um, layers, our initial layers. And um, so we went from one plain watercolor, a little extra watercolor, adding a bit of a burn, burn, baby, burn, edging, the white little droplets, and these other color droplet overlays. Fun, right? All right. So um, that is how I do watercolor. <laughs> um, another thing, um, to just to take it a step further, because we're going to make it into a full element, I'm going to choose my text tool. And we're going to put hello as our, uh, our text here. Now, how can I make this have a watercolor feel? You know? Like, let's say they used white ink or, um, or something, you know, or, or wax and then watercolored over it. How can we do this? Well, what I like to do um, is I have my layer, obviously. Uh, we have one base layer, which this is what, how we want to keep it, you know, because it's, you know, white ink. You know, that's awesome. We're going to duplicate our layer kind of like we did. Um, ugh, I duplicated the wrong layer because I suck. Um, we're going to duplicate that layer. We're going to turn down the fill again, as we did with the other one. All right. I'm going to rasterize the layers, uh, uh, the type. Okay. Um, and we're going to do an outer glow. We're going to turn that to black. We're going to turn it to color burn right there, as you see. And, and then I'm going to play with the effects. How much do I want it to do? Um, what do I want the range to be? Uh, do I want to add a little noise, the spread, you know, just, just messed around with it a little bit. That's great. And then again, I use my filter, my wave and just kind of offset it a little bit. So it's just a little less than perfect, a little less than perfect. That's what we want. We want it to be not a hundred percent. All right. Um, and you can move this now, you know, you just lock link your layers together and move it around until you have it where you want it all right um i'm going to on my own add a little bit extra to it so you can see and uh, i'm going to pause while i do that i was just thinking as i was going to do this on my own without your help ha 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 um that whenever you create a glow or an outer glow that you like the way it looks whenever you create it and you want it to be the same um just create it like a new style name it something like watercolor glow Make you, sure you include your layer effects and blending options. That way, now that I have my arrow here and um, I want to get that same effect, I have the style to do it just like that. All right. Um, I'm going to rasterize that style again. And the reason why I rest or not the style, the type, um, the reason why I do that is because whenever you use a filter, you cannot use a filter on a shape or a um, text. It has to be uh, you know, it has to be different. There, look how imperfect and cool that is. <laughs> I'm like, yay, it's great. Pat myself on the back because I'm a terrible person. Um, I'm going to change my edging a bit. I want to increase the size of it. I want it to be a little more um, there, if that makes sense. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. All right. Um, and I could teach you another crazy trick, which I will at the end of this, but I want this to be a sticker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my base. I'm just going to go to stroke, change it to white. And let's say like a thin sticker, 15 pixels. Why not? And bam, we have a sticker. I'm going to group all this stuff together. 
uh, and duplicate it so I can play around and not ruin one. I'm going to merge this group. And I'm going to add a drop shadow so you can see. Yay, sticker! See? Look, we have a little 4x4 four four awesome watercolor sticker. What do you think? No? Yes? Maybe? 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 All right. Um, now for the fun part. And you're like, the fun part? This whole thing was so much fun. Um, is creating a brush out of this. Why not? Um, if you're a designer, maybe you like creating brushes, uh, digital stamps, you know, it's a thing. So I'm going to, it doesn't matter that I have the white stroke outline, so don't worry about that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to adjustments and I'm going to add a black and white layer. Now we will lose our color, obviously, because I'm doing black and white. But what this allows me to do is play with my colors, my reds, and increase um, how much you see and don't see. You know, like I could get rid of some parts, make other parts a little darker. Uh, you just remember the colors that you were using and, uh, and kind of go from there. I'm going to make that. Bam. All right. What does this do? Well, this allows us to create our brush in black and white, which is important whenever you're playing with brushes. Um, and I might even play with my levels a little bit. Just a little bit like that. All right. And uh, I'm going to do a brush edit, define brush preset, and you can see there it's like, hello, and we're going to do watercolor brush. All right, I'm going to have a whole new document because I'm crazy. This is a 12 by 12 area, and I'm going to create a new layer so you can see, and I'm going to just choose a color. We're going to go with pink for because you know me. I just created this brush. It's pretty big, but look at that. Um, for your customers, if they wanted to have their own little hello brush and they just wanted it in any color of the rainbow, they could. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I hope this has been a helpful tutorial. I know it's been a really long tutorial, um, but just don't be afraid to really play around and have fun with watercolor, with overlays, with creating your own brushes. It's not difficult to do and uh, you really can get some great effects. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and uh, make sure to check out Nicole's awesome overlays. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.